Hi guys, it's Hinda and welcome to Cooking Fantasies. I'm super excited about today's video because we're going to be making churros, one of my favorite things ever to eat. I'm going to show you how to make the perfect churros with a very easy recipe. They always come out perfect, so crispy from the outside and rich from the inside. And most importantly, so delicious and flavorful. And to go with it, we're gonna be making a super easy to make and delicious chocolate sauce. And before we start, like always, I'm gonna be leaving you down in the description box all the ingredients you're gonna need in both the grams and the cups measurements, as well as a link to the full recipe where you can also print it. If you're new to the channel, we make a lot of easy and delicious recipes, so make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell to get notified whenever a new video is up. And let's get started. To make the churros, we're gonna need to prepare a basic pata choux or choux pastry. For this, you need to mix in a saucepan, water, salt, sugar, and the butter. Then bring your pot on a medium heat and allow the butter to melt and the mixture to start simmering. Then go ahead and add the flour in one go and use a spatula to start mixing it with the rest of the ingredients. And you wanna keep repeating this until you end up with a nice and smooth ball of dough. And while you can do this step totally off heat, I like to do it on the stove while it's off of course because a little bit of heat from the bottom will help dehydrate the dough and you end up with a better consistency. Another way to do it is to remove your pot from the heat, adding the flour incorporated, then go ahead and bring your pan or pot again on a very low heat and keep stirring or mixing or folding for a further minute to help the dough dehydrate. This step might take a couple of minutes, but it's totally worth it and it's very important. You know it's ready when you have a nice smooth ball of dough that doesn't contain any flour lumps and keeps sticking together even though when you break it, it keeps coming together very smooth and soft. Then go ahead and remove it from the heat. I like to transfer it to a new dish because this way it cools faster as it is very important for the dough to be totally cooled before you add the eggs, which is the next step. Once my dough has totally cooled, it's time to add the eggs. Of course, you can continue using a spatula and folding or just a wooden spoon, but I do like to use an electric mixer because it makes the work much faster and easier. It is also important to add the eggs only one at a time. So add the first egg, then fold it in or mix it till it's totally incorporated. Then go ahead and add the second one and repeat until it's also incorporated. And you don't wanna over mix it just enough till the eggs are incorporated. And that's why it's also important that the dough has cooled, otherwise your eggs will cook and you will end up with a weird texture. And finally, I'm going to add about half a teaspoon of vanilla extracts and gently fold it in my choux pastry dough. Basically, you can add the vanilla at any point of the recipe, but I like to add it at the end. Using a tall glass will help you transfer the pata choux easier into the piping bag. And I'm going to be using this simple piping tip, which is um, with a star design or pattern. You can use a bigger one if you would like your churros to be thicker. At this point, the pata choux is ready. You can start piping the churros directly into hot oil in a pan or another option, another way to do it is to pipe them into pieces of parchment paper. In both cases, you're going to need scissors. Make sure they're covered with enough vegetable oil. I personally prefer to pipe the churros into pieces of parchment paper before I fry them because first of all this gives you more control over the shape. So if you want to have nice churros that are equal or even then go ahead and pipe them on pieces of parchment paper but this is not really important it never matters how they look they always taste very good but the second reason is that sometimes I want to have this done a little bit in advance and then I only fry them right before we need to eat them or 
Why is it also good to pipe them on pieces of parchment paper is that you can directly freeze them into these pieces of parchment paper until they are solid frozen. Then you can put them all together in a container or in some freeze bags and leave them in the freezer until you want to eat them. Then you simply take them out and fry them. Now that the churros are ready, we're gonna start frying them. Make sure you have enough frying oil, about two cups, and it should be preheated ideally to 180 degrees Celsius. That's about 360 degrees Fahrenheit, but it doesn't have to be the exact measurement. Just make sure that it's hot enough. My oil is hot enough, so I'm going to be adding my churros. It is very important not to overcrowd the pan. Don't add too many pieces at once, otherwise the temperature will drop and they will get soggy. If you are piping directly into the oil, make sure to do five to six pieces at a time, not more. As soon as they start frying, the parchment paper will start coming off easier, so I'm going to remove it. And then you're going to leave fry for about one and a half to two minutes from each side until they are nice golden brown. But this also depends on how thick you made them. If you made a somehow thicker churros, then they might need two to two and a half minutes on each side. Ideally, if the oil is hot enough and you didn't overcrowd the pan, you will know that they're ready when you have the perfect color. I personally like and I recommend uh, churros in this shape, thin ones, because they get really nice crispy from the outside and they are not too heavy or too much from the inside. They have just the perfect texture. They are still full and, and rich, but they don't absorb so much oil. So I really like them this way. And as soon as I finish frying all my churros, now that they are ready, I'm going to coat them with some white sugar. I also added some vanilla infused sugar to my white sugar just to give it a little bit more vanilla flavor. You can also add cinnamon if you like cinnamon and you want to do this step while they are still warm but not too hot. Then go ahead and gently coat them with white sugar. You might want to do this one at a time or maybe use a bigger container so that they don't break. At this point, the churros are ready, they're perfect, but let's go ahead and make an easy and delicious chocolate sauce to go with them. And guys, this is a very easy and very delicious chocolate sauce recipe. We're gonna start by simply mixing all the dry ingredients directly into the saucepan. We have cornstarch, white sugar, and unsweetened cocoa powder. We're going to mix everything together, then go ahead and add the water. Give everything a quick whisk just to make sure that everything is well combined. Then go ahead and bring your saucepan on a medium heat. And while on the heat, you want to make sure to keep whisking until your sauce thickens. If you don't whisk while it's cooking, it's going to stick to the bottom. It will take about two minutes to three minutes. So as soon as you have a nice thick texture, remove it from the heat. This easy chocolate sauce recipe is meant to be uh, used or eaten right away or at least the same day. Since it contains cornstarch, it tends to make a thin crust on the top. So if you want to make this in advance, make sure to add about half to one tablespoon of butter and mix it in with the sauce to make it smoother. And now finally, it's time to serve and enjoy. As you see, the churros came out really nice and perfect. They are crispy, they are rich, delicious, and they have really nice flavor. I hope you enjoyed and you liked today's recipe, and I hope you will be trying it out soon. And if you do, please let me know how it turned out. I'm always really looking forward and extremely happy to read your comments, your feedback. And if you have any questions, just ask me down in the comment sections and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget to check the description box for the full recipe in both the grams and the cups measurements as always. I thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell to get notified whenever a new recipe is up. And see you soon in a new video. Happy baking!